Okay. So uh, here you'll you'll get installer link. You need to put your uh, OS version. If you have uh, OS seven ten, if you are using Mac, uh, just write Mac in this. Okay, and uh, download the uh, like the related MySQL installer. Okay, so uh, it how will you uh, check if it is right or wrong? So it should be in the range of uh, 370 to uh, 450 MB is fine. Okay, so if you are choosing Microsoft uh, Windows 7, uh, so the file size might be little less. The one which I am showing on the screen is uh, for Windows 10. Okay, so keep the, uh, put this in download now. Uh, so let's uh, go ahead and uh, let's talk about uh, the session as i was asking uh, in the session so in, in the initial uh, few sessions we will discuss the concepts uh, of sql and why i particularly choose my sql okay there are other versions of sql like oracle microsoft sql server okay why i choose uh, my uh, sql overall there are reasons because uh, industry is moving towards MySQL, okay, because of its flexibility and compatibility with other program, other tools and uh, languages, okay. So uh, in my other session, wherein uh, I'm planning to uh, use MySQL in Python, okay, in my Python session, so MySQL is completely compatible with Python, and it can be used in any Python ID. You talk about Jupyter Notebook, you talk about uh, like Anaconda, anywhere. It is used in Tableau. If you if you uh, wish to be in visualization, uh, definitely at the back you need to have a database. So MySQL is very very much compatible with Tableau. I personally use MySQL in R because it is very much uh, compatible with R, and it it is just a library that you need to call and you can write queries in my uh, R programming. Okay, so that is the reason. Uh, it gives you a very wider scope. You learn one language and it is used across rather than you learn any uh, like full licensed version of mysql server microsoft and uh, oracle that has some compatibility issues with other programming languages other tools okay that was uh, the reason of choosing mysql for this course and uh, you'll get assignments you'll have a lot of assignments uh, for this sessions so uh, you that, that's the reason you need to have mysql installed in your system to uh, work on this assignment and, ult and ultimately we'll end up with a project where you'll get a raw data uh, with some business problems and you need to solve those problems questions basically uh, using that data in MySQL. Are we good so far? Guys? Yep. Oh great. Fine. Uh, so anything uh, now let's come back to your <coughs> sorry. Uh, let's get back to uh, your queries now and uh, please tell me if you have if you have some pre expectations from the course uh, and uh, you expected something and that you want that to happen. So please uh, since we are just starting uh, you can put up your expectations so that uh, we'll see the feasibility if we can incorporate that in our session or not. Okay. So please feel free to go, go ahead and uh, tell me if you have something specific uh, because what I uh, what we intended and what uh, how we have designed the course is for uh, people who are fresh who are in college or or people who are from non technical background want to, want to get into technical okay uh, that is how we have designed so it will be from very very basics I mean like from zero Uh, I, I have a question like uh, yeah, go ahead, it's, it's, to, it's totally uh, our programming like it's our course basically we do not have to deal with the python because i was familiar with the python so that's why no, so uh, this is 90% uh, sql for in the first place 90 95% sql okay so there are a couple of uh, students uh, candidates who have joined us from uh, our session like previous our programming session Okay. okay, so we have just uh, taken up one small case study, uh, like let's say 30 minutes maximum uh, in the 16 hours to show how SQL is used in R. How can, how can you use uh, R Studio 
to call up MySQL queries or MySQL data in your R session. So that is one small case study. Okay. And in future, like uh, we, we, ha we have ongoing sessions on Python and R. So we are extensively using uh, MySQL in the Python ID and my uh, R ID. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, but this is extensively into SQL. So don't worry about that. So, yeah. Okay, well, well uh, we, we guys actually belong to dot net background, so we generally used to deal with the my, my SQL, right? Yeah, sorry, so, uh, SQL server, SQL okay, server. Yeah. So, so Microsoft has its own uh, limits and boundaries. So if you use Microsoft Stack, so you'll have to use everything of Microsoft Stack because I have been familiar with uh, Visual Studio .NET framework. Yeah, yeah. Really. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, guys. So go ahead, please. Okay, uh, so there's a very valid question coming in. Uh, uh, yeah, from Shruti. So basically, uh, I, I was supposed to cover this, but somehow I missed. So uh, the, the other reason, apart, uh, apart from the compatibility of data science tools and languages of MySQL, there is there is some other important factor that uh, that enforced me to take up sessions on MySQL, and that is uh, that from the language perspective. Okay, so if you learn MySQL, so uh, SQL has a, a standard uh, forum uh, that is under ANSI, A-N-S-S-I, okay, uh, that uh, governs the entire SQL system, entire SQL Microsoft, Oracle. So you talk about any SQL uh, framework, so it is governed by one body, okay, and which, which puts up the st uh, standards on what should be the language, okay, and that uh, standards has been set up okay uh, keeping in mind mysql because this is one of the oldest okay so whatever query that you learn syntax that you will learn in mysql okay uh, make sure 100% uh, of the time okay i can say 99% of the time will be valid and implemented in other framework as well okay so if you learned uh, if you have already you already know mysql and how to code in how to write queries in mysql okay so you know almost all the query languages starting from oracle microsoft uh, talk about Hive, Impala, okay. So even it, this is even uh, applicable in big data system, okay. So Hive is uh, something which uh, where we query in big data system. Impala is something where, where we query on Cloudera system, Cloudera big data system. It is uh, implemented everywhere. Okay, so we will come to that demand sheet. Yeah, so that is one reason. So you feel free. Uh, uh, so you are you might be learning MySQL, but you uh, parallelly uh, you are getting familiar with any any of the uh, SQL structured query languages system. Okay, and uh, sometimes it is hundred percent. So if you talk about uh, Oracle, it is hundred percent matchup. If you talk about uh, Microsoft SQL Server, uh, it might be a little different, but yeah, ninety five percent of the time the queries will remain same. Okay, so direct copy paste will work. Yeah. So there's a question, what is the difference between SSMS and MySQL? So uh, uh, Dipanshi, what is SSMS? Uh, what is the full form of SSMS? Okay, so SQL Server Management. So SQL Server Management Studio uh, is a product of uh, my uh, Microsoft, if I'm not wrong. Okay, uh, and yeah, uh, because uh, in my initial days, I I used to work on uh, Microsoft Stack. Okay, and we used to use uh, this reporting service SSIS, SSMS. Okay. SSMS, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, so SSMS uh, is a, a complete. Uh, I mean, it's a suit we call a microsoft suit of uh, sql okay uh, where you have uh, from development environment from data handling etl okay reporting everything you have it in one suit and uh, sql server is a part of it so sql server is used extensively for querying language so mysql is that it's uh, it is again uh, the enterprise version of mysql uh, is, is they have uh, the suit uh, where they have everything from reporting, ETL, and uh, querying everything. 
what we are learning is uh, you can if you want to compare it with the Microsoft Suite, it, we are learning uh, Microsoft SQL Server. Okay, that's the difference. And uh, Microsoft uh, MySQL, uh, like there's one issue with uh, any of the SQL system is uh, they come up with a lot of updates. Okay, so always, uh, this is my personal suggestion, always keep yourself two to three updates behind uh, the latest update. Okay, because the latest update will have some you know, bugs, issues, patches. Okay, so to to be on the safe side when you are learning, uh, install two to three, two or three versions older uh, to be on the safe side. Okay, and the a later question of Dipanshi was uh, what I have understood is that SQL is a query language. MySQL is a, is a RDBMS which uses SQL, uh, and SSMS is a workbench. Uh, are just ID, yeah. So exactly, that is uh, that you are, you and me are on the same page. That is what it is. And uh, MySQL is uh, is RDBMS. Uh, and on that note, uh, SQL Server is also an RDBMS. Okay. So uh, they both are RDBMS. And when you talk about uh, non-relational databases, so you have Cloudera, Hortonwork, and any other big data systems. Okay. Fine. Uh, any great thanks uh, yeah so uh, good guys so we have uh, we are getting some questions so let feel free if you have any more questions and uh, if you want to share your experience even so since we have an experienced guy with us like a couple of folks so if you want to share some of your experience please go ahead yeah Okay, so now uh, there are two aspects. Uh, since we are in the first session and we are installing the uh, software, so you will have Max, uh, MySQL. That is a you can call it call it an IDE. Okay, and then you will have one. Uh, so this is an ID wherein you are installing uh, uh, the entire database. Okay, uh, which will uh, get fixed up or which, which will use your system as a database, some part of your system as a database uh, to store data or uh, to create tables. And uh, uh, when you query it, so it will hit the tables and data. Okay, then you have a UI. So uh, you can use terminal definitely uh, to uh, query the data, but that is not preferred uh, from at least from learning perspective, because writing queries in terminal at times, it becomes very difficult for non techie guys. Okay. So we have a UI that is called Workbench, MySQL Workbench, that we that will be a part of that installer. Okay, it will be a part of the installer. So this is an UI. Okay, uh, if any of you have used R programming or a Python, so every language has two aspects. You can use Terminal, where you, where you can directly interact with the UI, uh, the ID, and then you have a front end, the better version of it from user perspective. Uh, in R, we have R Studio, wherein we code in R Studio. Okay, and uh, in MySQL, you have MySQL Workbench. Okay, uh, there's uh, you take two to five minutes to uh, get this up and running. Okay, wherein just you need to set up your ID and password. Okay, and connect this to your MySQL so that it is uh, like connected, and then you write a query here rather than writing in a terminal. So you have a good uh, syntax writing. Uh, it will have a color coding. Uh, it will it will tell you what is the error. So basically, that is the best part when you learn. So you, whenever you get an error, so it will tell you which part of the code is having an error, which is very difficult to track when you are writing a code on terminal. Okay. So we'll not like we'll completely shift our discussion towards workbench. We'll not talk about terminal. Okay. Because that that is a pain point. Okay. Okay, so uh, guys, I, I guess uh, you all have started the downloading process and uh, we'll, uh, we'll quickly start with uh, like basics. Okay, so feel free if you have any questions, so do ask questions. Uh, Saj, you will be sharing this PDF. 
Uh, yeah, I'll be sharing this PDF uh, and I, even uh, the sessions, uh, this entire session will be getting recorded. So all our sessions generally get recorded. Okay. And okay. Uh, the registered candidates will get the uh, like doc. So, uh, so the thing is, uh, just let me take you through uh, the first, like how does the session goes. So this is our portal guys. So uh, like once you register, uh, so uh, you'll get uh, like based, based on your ID and password, uh, if all the materials will be uploaded in the uh, material section of the workshop. So uh, th there'll be no email circulation that will happen because the emails will be becoming chunked, spammed. Uh, the files are a little huge in size. So all the PDFs, uh, materials, assignments, project, data, uh, and the uh, recording link will be uploaded uh, here in the workshop page. Just uh, go and view materials, okay? And you'll get, uh, once I have not uploaded anything now because this is the first session. Session-wise, everything you'll get it here. You can download it and uh, use it from here itself directly, right? So uh, that is uh, on part of your, uh, materials and PDFs, uh, even the data, data and uh, project will be here. Everything will be here, okay? Fine, so uh, let's move ahead guys. And uh, we have, uh, so uh, when, once we start, uh, since we don't have our SQL system up and running, so before that we will let, let's try and understand uh, the uh, the modeling part, uh, like why do we need SQL in the first place? And uh, it, it has a huge, like long history. Uh, we are not getting into that, but uh, Oracle uh, is a uh, like Oracle uh, covers almost seventy to seventy five percent of the market in RDBMS. Now uh, we'll uh, we'll have a quick bifurcation. So in today's time, uh, post digitization, uh, like earlier, we used only used to talk about RDBMS because that was the only thing used to exist. Okay, but in today's time, we have it is bifurcated into two. So we have a relational database management system, RDBMS, and then we have no SQL. Okay. So when we talk about no SQL, it is not, it does not mean that we, we are not using SQL there. There is some misnomer. Okay. And it's, it is, it generally stands for non-structured databases. Okay. So uh, what we deal here in RDBMS is a structured databases. Okay. And uh, it is wise. It is just opposite in uh, no SQL. It is non-structured databases. Schema less, right? Yeah, schema less. So, how do we? Uh, how? Do, what is the clear distinction? Because this is a very good uh, and very frequently asked interview question. Uh, how do we define a structure and uh, unstructured databases? And there's a third term popping in: uh, semi-structured. Okay. So, what is? How do you distinguish between uh, these three different data? Okay, structured, semi-structured, and non-structured. And how do you handle it? So, when we talk about structured. So uh, one one line of definition is any data that can be translated into tabular form, okay, which can be uh, envisioned or which can, which can be transformed into rows and columns, okay, into a table. That is structured data and that can be handled and that is handled by RDBMS, relational databases, okay. And when we talk about relational databases, MySQL is a relational database, okay. When you talk about semi-structured, so semi-structured is something which uh, which uh, got introduced uh, as unstructured, but due to technical reforms, technology uh, upgrade, upgrades, we can transform that into a uh, like tabular and uh, like pages and a document. So uh, it is a semi-structure. So it, it was non-structured, but uh, we can transform that into a uh, no, uh, tabular format or a pages format. So a good example of that is any day hive is a good example of uh, converting unstructured to semi-structured and uh, it's an example of no SQL. Now completely like unstructured is your audio, video, free text, okay, uh, logs, uh, any, any kind of logs that you are getting uh, from any activities. Okay, so images, so those are unstructured. And uh, so to name a couple of uh, like no, no SQL databases will be your MongoDB, which is uh, up and uh, it, it is extensively used in industry. So uh, one of my projects like currently I'm working on is extensively into MongoDB. Okay. And uh, in Mongo, and when you learn SQL, so you, you deal with all RDBMS. You can write queries in any kind of RDBMS. But when you talk about no SQL, coding in no SQL is a little different. Okay, so it is a script rather than a query. Okay, you write script like uh, 
if you have worked in shell commands so it's more of a shell commands okay so uh, i guess uh, it is a big thing to discuss uh, am I, was i like am i clear to you or do you have any questions in this yeah so like uh, uh, in an unstructured data uh, data set we can take a uh, talk about the meta metadata right the data about data so data about data exactly so unstructured data is a meta data about data okay yeah, if you talk about so, the log yeah, yeah. so, so you you as a, a person have a facebook profile okay so your profile is a data okay yeah. but under under your data there are a lot of activities done by other people okay so there is again that is again a data okay so uh, if i need to define you so i need i'll have to use your profile as well as your activities that is happening inside your profile so your data as well as inside the data so there is a like big graph that gets formed inside okay and uh, that is how uh, like it is defined as unstructured and uh, majorly in today's time the reforms that we are seeing in nosql no sql side so it is more of a graph based databases that is popping in okay you talk about neo 4 js uh, and you talk that is uh, one of the biggest uh, that that is a technology of facebook that is coming in uh, for unstructured and no sql databases okay so you can uh, have a look how, how neo 4 js is working okay now uh, there's one very uh, good point that you will love uh, to listen i mean like from a learning perspective hi we, we all have you must have all heard about at least we must have all heard about big data okay so now big data uh, in big data we have a querying language uh, called uh, hive or pig so pig is scripting forget about it hive is sql so they have so hive is developed by uh, facebook and uh, initially when they started facing this challenge of uh, unstructured no sql databases so they figured out like how do we uh, deal with it so they they had a scripting language okay but uh, then later on they figured out to they have already developed a scripting language but they need to train the entire uh, like employees and then up, upcoming new employees to uh, write the scripting language because this is something of their own they have developed it so further they uh, that was map reduce basically and uh, uh, further they developed they said like why not develop a system that will understand normal sql and internally they that will con get converted into a map reduce and they developed hive okay so this is a very good point for us people who know sql uh, we we do not need to bother and learn about map reduce okay so we just need to write S uh, sql queries on hive and we can deal with big data system as well oh it is like uh, uh, sorry for interruption but uh, yeah. it is like we can uh, uh, apply indexes on the big data so that we can reveal uh, a faster queries like patch the queries from Correct. yeah so uh, earlier when i started my career back in 2013 okay we used to write we used to code in big data system using map reduce uh, either in python or in uh, uh, c sharp okay uh, so that was really difficult but uh, from 2014 and 13 14 onwards we had good stable hive version where we used to write sql query and uh, that used to index the data that that used to uh, help us get the data from big data system so all i want to say is if you if uh, since you are learning sql so a good grip on sql will also help you to understand uh, like big data system and uh, like i i don't know like since you guys couple of you guys are uh, from uh, like good experience uh, like background so now databases are actually seeing a radical drift shift from uh, traditional databases to big data system the reason is the big data system has come up this come up with this uh, flexibility and this uh, uh, flexibility i'll say to deal with structured and unstructured data both so the industry is looking in uh, for a one system that has all the capabilities rather than having two different systems uh, structured and unstructured okay so all my current projects uh, like um, with whatever projects i'm engaged in okay so the the client requirement uh, the requirement is why we'll have two different systems and take keep a pain point and pay for two, two different licenses to the vendors bring everything into one system okay uh, since big data has already developed this capability of dealing with rd uh, relational databases as well as no no sql let's keep in this in, into a one place so uh, this is again a very good uh, this generally 
I always say this whenever I am into this SQL sessions that SQL is one thing. Uh, if you want to kickstart a career into analysis, analytics, data science, okay, SQL is one thing that you must have, okay, and then only you will go ahead. That that is the importance of SQL. Yeah, it's something like the we can bring about the structure and unstructured data together from a different yeah. data sources, and we can build, uh, convert into a CSV file or a tabular format. Yeah, so we are we are already doing that uh, basically, and this is uh, this this is being practiced across industry. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so uh, now let's start. Uh, the, 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 this is a very first. Uh, we have a very small, small presentation because uh, presentation is uh, one part. Uh, it is the, the emphasis is uh, completely into the practical side. So, uh, so uh, just to have a quick understanding on what we will do, uh, I have a presentation in front of you. I hope you can see the screen. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, data models. Uh, in part, there are two parts. Part one and part two. So, in part one, it's all about thinking the data. So, what do you understand by the data? Okay. And then, how do we think it is stored in the system? Okay. So, here uh, the objective will be to understand what how data is stored in the system. Okay. So, whatever uh, like the good example is CSV. Okay. So, think about CSV as a data, and that is a data, no doubt. Okay. Uh, so when we uh, that can that be a database for us? Okay, if you ask this question, uh, let's say you have a CSV of uh, fifty MB. Okay, can that act as a database? Okay. Yeah, yeah, it can. It 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 is definitely. Uh, it's a database. So if any of you who have used Access Microsoft Access, which yeah, is a database. Yeah, yeah. it was a database. Right? Yeah. So Microsoft Access was a database, and uh, like it was a, a querying interface, and that used to use Excel as a database. So you can think. So basic understanding, if you want to develop uh, of, of for the database, so take because we all have seen uh, CSV files, Excel files. So that is the database. So how do you understand that? So if I open this is my Excel, okay. Now in this Excel. Let's say I have uh, this is my data, okay. So here I have uh, students, uh, their email ID, the courses they have registered, and then date, uh, registered date and gateway and amount, whatever, okay. So this is my uh, database. So how 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 will I define that this is a structure or non-structure? So since I can pick up any particular row row or any particular uh, value, I can index that, okay. I mean like I can somehow get that using query. So this is your, like how do we define rows and columns? So anything which is, this is your rows, right? So uh, this, uh, this is a column, just make sure. Like uh, this, you see D, E, F, G, H, I, J, this is your column, okay? For, for guys uh, who are from stats background, so the variables that we define, right? The variables that we have that are your columns okay now entries so this is your column column one column two and so on okay and entries the individual entries that you have uh, the row wise operations okay uh, in like in other uh, if you talk about r we call like entries just a entries okay so that is your row okay row one row two okay now in combination rows and column so the, it forms a matrix okay so you have rows and columns it actually forms a matrix and this is a table we like combination of rows and columns is called a table and data data are stored in column format in the databases okay <clears throat> Yeah, so uh, now uh, like people from stats background and economics background here, if I want to access this, so if you check here, what does Excel say? D4. So D4 is unique identity to this name, okay, this cell. So that is how we refer in SQL. We somehow st like st data is stored in uh, in a table tabular format in a databases, and then we query uh, write queries. In order to achieve this, 
and how do we do that in reference of rows and columns okay so that is how uh, if you think uh, uh, like that 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 forms a very basic and good understanding of how we should look into the data uh, and the databases now uh, database is something this again this this forms a very good interview question so what what do you understand about data database okay so a database can can have one table okay can have multiple tables it it is a it it is a combination of tables okay it is a basically agglomeration of uh, several data right so uh, coding is a uh, data prospect uh, definitely but uh, if we somehow understand how data are stored in our uh, system okay it it forms a very good uh, when we write uh, scripts when we write queries so it forms a very good uh, uh, like map of what we are actually trying to query and what we are getting generally uh, when we start we keep on uh, hitting the keyboards okay and the output is not satisfactory it is not anywhere near what we are looking for so learning query will not help in that case because you already know the query learning how data is stored in the system how data uh, i mean how columns uh, which columns are stored how rows are uh, sorted what is the index all those things will matter okay <clears throat> so uh, yeah so uh, understanding your data is uh, the the same thing that we are discussing any any questions as such you have okay so yeah if you have any questions please go ahead yeah uh, in the world of columnar database uh -huh. how this sql fits in column data if you talk about columnar database okay yeah so uh, that is all together a different uh, league of databases okay so uh, that is more focused on uh, unstructured data okay with prime focus on uh, reducing the sizes of the data okay that is a prime focus of columnar database so you, you talk about mongodb mongodb, MongoDB is uh, one uh, one good example of uh, uh, columnar database okay mm -hmm. and you talk about uh, hbase okay and then you talk about dynamo okay and then you talk about this uh, uh, this, uh, this the one which came by aws s3 okay so uh, this all the all these databases uh, like someone is columnar someone is uh, someone is uh, like object object based databases okay so columnar is like storing like having one column of entire entry so if you if you check this if you if you come back here now uh, like me as a uh, individual how my data uh, details are stored i have one column so column represents my uh, like uh, call it, uh, it's it's quantity it's quality right uh, so it is my let's say name email id course date so this are my uh, like if i need to, if someone needs to define me okay then they'll have to use all my columns right and in mm -hmm. column uh, columnar this all my details forms let's say my name is uh, my i have unique identity sajid underscore one one two three four is my unique identity okay now to understand me in rdbms you'll have to understand like you'll have to query all the uh, columns but here under sajid this is my unique identity this is a primary yeah, i don't want to get into technical this is a unique mm -hmm. identity of mine okay and you need to hit this and under this all this uh, my my uh, like uh, details will be as a json which will define me okay so what happens you you uh, you save on uh, memory you don't need to store so many things and you uh, that is under one variable here and uh, you can uh, get the details so you this is your, this forms your parent node okay and under that you have child nodes different different child nodes but that is altogether a different thing uh, columnar databases 
Okay, so but we can say that yes, SQL exists in corner world, but in quite different way. Can we say that? You uh, mean from uh, querying perspective? Um, not from querying. Frankly speaking, I'm not from SQL background. So okay. I'm from SAP background. Okay. And uh, they are talking about HANA and that is a columnar database. Yeah. So I'll tell you one thing. Uh, so for, sorry, I didn't got a good name. Uh, My name is Sandeep. I joined later actually. Yeah. So Sandeep, uh, see, I'll tell you. Uh, if you talk about querying perspective, if that is your uh, question, so no. So query, uh, querying columnar databases is compared, uh, completely different. Uh, I uh, like so far what I have used. Uh, there might be some IDE that converts your SQL into uh, columnar query. Okay, that's a different thing. But talk, talking about HANA, talking about uh, uh, Dynamo, talking about uh, uh, MongoDB. Okay, so uh, these are your uh, columnar, and we write scripts. So script is uh, basically uh, if you uh, if you have seen Linux script. Okay, so where you uh, you try to get the node parent node child node so you are you are hitting the nodes okay so that is uh, that is there so querying is nowhere similar when you talk about concepts okay so any databases that exist in the world okay uh, that are uh, that is basically uh, meant for storing data and uh, using that data for solving business problem so in concept they are different in their same definitely but in my in ui querying they might be different okay yeah, i hope answer, I answer yeah sure that's answer. fine that's fine yeah. you explained beautifully thank you thank, thank you okay bye. okay so uh, uh yeah so what i was uh trying to get into is yeah so understanding your data this is this was our uh, discussion uh and uh, uh, yeah, so we were talking about uh, uh, like storing data. Now, uh, when we talk about, uh, we took an example of normal CSV and uh, uh, we, that is a database for us, okay? Now think about normal 40 MB CSVs and that you are receiving uh, 10,000 CSVs every day, okay? So that uh, forms approximately one TB of data. Okay, if you receive 10,000 uh, 40, 40 uh, MB data uh, CSV, so that, that forms one TB of uh, in total data size. Okay, now just imagine the problem was so small uh, that uh, 40 MB file you can open in your mobile device. Okay, like you can open it in easily in your any of your system, no matter what the configuration is, how small it is. 40 MB is likely like manageable, but world is a big place to live in okay and you have so many like seven seven billion people and companies try to achieve uh, information of all the people they say that that we are trying to achieve uh, uh, store like facebook claims we have we almost have we almost have information of every people who is residing on earth almost okay so out of seven billion people they target they say that they have uh, profiles of around three billion people but in general, they try and cover every people on the face of earth. Okay, so when they when the company target uh, something, make a statement something like this. So what they are trying to uh, say is, they have huge data. Okay, they have the data is uh, like and it is growing day in, day in and day out. Okay, so the problem is not small. It will never be solved on your uh, local system. Uh, so a TBs of data is a pit. Uh, so uh, generally we have seen we we have seen an era of kbs then uh, bytes kbs mbs gbs tbs petabytes and zettabytes okay now the industry is looking for beyond this what is beyond zettabytes okay so uh, earlier we used to generate uh, gbs of data every day okay now we are generating peta petabytes of data every day so pbs are current threshold zettabyte is something we have discovered but will soon in five to ten years will move beyond zettabytes so what is beyond zettabytes okay so uh, it is it is a uh, exploding area and it is exploding actually and will explode so that's the reason database and uh, is uh, evolving as a tool and technology and as a carrier okay when i talk about a uh, huge data side databases so as a front-end user as a consumer so we 
analysts, data scientists, data decision science professionals, analytics professionals. We so called or we love to call ourselves a data consumer. Okay, because we consume data to drive insights to to run the business. Okay. Handling the data, managing it, managing it, creating it, uploading it, optimizing it, okay, indexing it is something which happens at the back. Okay. And that forms the data engineering side, data engineers, okay, which are working at the back. But it is always good to understand because uh, it, it optimizes your part as well. It, uh, it uh, increases your learning. So anything that at the, happens at the back on the data uh, modeling part, so uh, don't get confused by a statistical model, machine model, machine learning model. It's a data model. Okay, how do we store the data? How do we index the data? How do we structure the data? Okay, that is there. So that is at, at the back. So I don't think we need to get into that because data modeling is a, a pre backend side of it. Okay, and we'll be more focused. We'll be focusing more on the consumer consumption side like how do we use that data okay yeah so uh, like the continuation of the slide is uh, like since uh, we talk about data modeling uh, uh, and it, it is more of a uh, storing the data handling it uh, optimizing it for queries okay queries and indexing it so indexing is how do we store the data so we have a detailed discussion on indexing we'll have in coming slide Okay, so why it is important? Why understanding your data is important? Because this is uh, this will make your life easier. Otherwise, if the data is not stored properly, you will write normal queries and you, it will take an hours and hours to get you the result, and you will lose your time. So, if the data is stored properly in this phase, the pre-storation, the data engineering side, okay, and you understand how it is stored, which table has what kind of information. To get this particular information, which table you should hit, okay? What, how the tables are indexed, okay? How columns are named, okay? How variables are stored? What is the type of the variables? If you understand all these basics, okay, you this part of your this because this is your part, uh, querying it, this becomes easier. You get queries faster, okay? You just get less reworks, okay? And the result that you are getting is accurate. Okay, the aggregates that you are creating is accurate. Okay, so uh, we already discussed about it. So I got one uh, good example of this, and this is a, a very normally used everywhere. So you can have a, a look uh, in if you I don't know if you have been to banks earlier. Okay, uh, when the uh, when it was not core banking, it was not uh, completely into computer side. Okay, uh, that time in banks they used to uh, store all the customers all the uh, like customers who have accounts in their bank uh, in this way okay with their names uh, each drawer has you, you you even get this in the medical store now if you go to medical store okay uh, in the medical store they'll have drawers where they'll say a to b then c to d e to f so what does that mean in a to b you'll get all the medicines which whose name starts from a a b c like Okay, so if uh, if you if you are searching for let's say strep cell, so they'll open the drawer which has S in written it in it. I guess you have all encountered this situation because everybody buys medicine, right? Guys, any relevance? Can you no, make, yeah. can you make yeah. a relevance out of it? So yes. Banking, yes, yes. Yeah. So yes. banking might be difficult because I guess people are uh, uh, in quite. Uh, our audience are quite young, so they might have not seen non-core banking, but uh, medicine we all have seen. So why do we do this? Uh, if you have not done, just imagine a situation that will give you a good understanding why you, why we need to do this. Okay. So let's say if if you have not done a uh, proper labeling or indexing of the uh, medicine, and uh, haphazardly we have kept uh, all the medicines in like any drawer. Okay. Just imagine if you you went and you wanted to buy. Uh, let's say uh, paracetamol okay the owner will have to the people will have to search the entire shop to get you the medicine and that would might have taken an hour or half a day okay 
so they came up with this idea why not store uh, label the uh, drawer with particular letters and store all the medicine of that letter starting with that letter in that uh, drawer so if you need uh, paracetamol they directly open the p drawer and they'll search for the medicine and then they'll give it to you this becomes faster so similarly let's say here we are 14 people we can easily become 1400 and 14000 in coming days so this 14 people information if we store haphazardly in an excel file okay let's say here in this excel file and uh, we need to uh, look for let's say uh, like uh, pile okay so uh, one quick option that we have is control f but that does not work in databases always you cannot uh, control f there so you'll have to individually look for name and then ultimately you'll end up looking in pile and then you'll select this okay just imagine you have 10 lakh rows and you need to search pile so you'll have to uh, go individually and look for it okay so database management deals with all the tools techniques technologies or concepts to store the data in a way that the searching becomes optimal okay because ultimately they are storing the data we are storing the data to query it okay and to query it you need to have you need to take less time and to take less time it needs to be stored in that way okay so storing and indexing is important so we have a detailed discussion on indexing but indexing when i talk about indexing i am talking about labeling each rows uniquely okay so indexing is this on a nutshell for now you can understand this so i'm trying to label each rows uniquely okay that can be your uh, like employee id that can be your student id that can be your uh, uh, like pan card aadhar card voter card whatever okay or unique number so what happens i know ashmita ashmita is like one uh, so uh, one in, uh, one indicates so the database understands one one is what this ashmita ashmita and her details okay what is nine gaurav and her and his details so this becomes very easy when you index it so this is your indexing indexing in a nutshell so there are different kinds of indexing we'll see what is primary key what is foreign key what is all those things that will come into picture but for now unique identity to each row is your index okay so at the back when a data engineers work so they make sure that uh, your indexing is done properly your data is indexed okay so again the same example of columns and rows which we have already discussed so uh, people from uh, like stats and economics background variables is your columns okay okay and instances is your row each instance is a row okay so are we good fine so uh, uh fine so let's uh, go ahead and how many of your uh, mysql installer file is installed I, I mean it is downloaded yeah sorry can you repeat Which yeah, so, so like if you have started downloading the uh, installer file of mysql how many of you have that in your system now is it downloaded or is it, is it still getting downloaded <coughs> no sorry okay. actually i joined late so i'm not yeah. aware about it so uh, no worries so what happened is like i'll again uh, put the link on the chat so you need to download a uh, microsoft installer okay so that because uh, we have this complete session on microsoft uh, on uh, mysql so we uh, we have asked everybody who uh, who have joined the session to mm -hmm. uh, to download the mysql in the system so that we can install it okay once we install it uh, uh, then only we'll be able to uh, run it so uh, guys what you can do is uh, i'll i'll first of all i'll stop the recording uh, i'll okay so let's go ahead yeah so our second uh, discussion uh, like is based on data models like uh, how do we uh, it is just a theory because we are not get, getting into uh, a lot of 
So, yeah. Uh, so, a learning objective from this is uh, describing data models and uh, uh, like what is data model first of all. So, uh, what we discussed is uh, like when we store the data, we need to uh, understand certain practice. We need to understand certain practices, and uh, when we query the data, we need to understand that practices so that our query becomes easier. Okay, that is the whole idea. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so. So uh, if you see here, so you, you get the feel of it, the real life scenario. So what is data modeling? So we have like my information, let's say, let's say uh, me as a employee of X company. Okay. So I have some certain uh, my demographics details. Okay. Uh, wherein uh, I have my name, date of birth, family, uh, my previous experiences. Okay. So all uh, my uh, my blood group, phone number, email ID, all those things. Then you have some. Uh, this is normal demographic details, which every all the company has it. it entire company can access it. Then I have some HR related uh, details, uh, uh, like uh, my salaries, my previous experiences, okay, uh, and my PFs and all those things. Then I have uh, this will remain with HR. Then I'll have third uh, details, uh, which is which might be uh, my finance okay uh, which is my reimbursements and all those finance related things my claims my cabs and all those things so a single pe person can have so many uh, details and everybody has uh, like those information is accessible by different uh, groups okay when we store it so what is common common is me okay as an employee so that becomes a very key thing and uh, uh, the, when when a admin or a data engineer stores such such information okay so they make sure that when they store it they build a relation between all these three uh, three different uh, data sources so example if you see here so we have uh, time dimension okay uh, we have uh, units history facts we have customer dimension okay so like among these three we understand that there will be one thing which is common uh, that can be a customer if, if it's a customer data that it can be uh, it can be a time a month okay which which will be common in all these three different tables so when they store it okay so sometimes we need information which is in this table and in this table so we need to make use of both the table so there should be some relation okay in this two table Sometimes we need the information from this table, time dimension and customer dimension. So there should be some relation between these two tables. So keeping in keeping in mind, so the modeling works on a relation. Okay. And there are different types of relation that we uh, build. Uh, we'll see that uh, what kind of different relationships that we have. But on a nutshell, when the data is stored at the back uh, in the uh, databases, uh, the data professionals, the data engineers need to make sure that uh, first of all it is indexed properly and it is having some relation the, there is no individual table with uh, like there is no uh, there's one individual solo table that is of no use for us okay there should be a relation between all the tables that is stored okay so what is data modeling uh, organizes the data structures uh, structures information into multiple related tables so as uh, as i said so uh, if I have three different tables, so uh, storing it and having a relation between all these three tables will have uh, uh, that will act as a like good data modeling practice. Okay. So uh, can represent business processes or relationship between business processes? Correctly said. Should closely represent the real world. Okay. So let's move ahead. So uh, types of data models. So uh, when I talk about types of data model, like what are the practices, what are the different practices uh, which is uh, used to store the data. So there are, there, in theory, you'll find a number of uh, uh, data models practices, types of data models. But in reality, the one which is used in industry is only one or two, which is practiced by industry. So star schema is one way and snowflake schema is another way. There are only two ways which we practice. Okay. 
So uh, there's a brief history. Uh, so guys, uh, if you just want to take a note, because I don't have the names here uh, for some reason, but if you want, I can put it on a board and you can take a note of it. So star schema, because this forms a good question for interview. Okay, star schema and snow flex. These are the two ways we store the data. Okay, uh, data models, uh, data modeling techniques. So if I want, if I, if I need to show you, I'll show you on images in Google. Okay. Yeah, so, okay, so better than that, this is the example. Okay, so if you see this, uh, this is, uh, this forms a star, okay, where you have one, uh, one uh, single system, let's say this is student, uh, this is me, employee, okay, and some data is uh, HR related data, this is some is financial related, finance related data, some is like normal demographic related data, and this is how the entire tables, entire system are connected across me. Okay, and then you have a snowflake schema, which is used very rarely, but yeah, uh, where uh, you, you see multiple stars forming. Okay, so uh, I'll download this image, I, I'll even send this image to you. Oh, uh, hello, yeah, yeah, I'm just doing the download and it's set up, it is asking for setup type. So can you help me what option we have to choose developer default server only or client only? So uh, you just download it and keep it in a system. We'll, we'll take the installation. Uh, okay. We'll do the installation. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So great. So let's move ahead. So a brief history, uh, like how databases has evolved over time. Okay, let me uh, I'll remove it later on. Yeah, so uh, like as I said uh, in the very start, at the very starting that we started uh, databases from long time back and uh, it started. Okay, so, okay. Uh, you, uh, somebody, uh, Sandeep, you asked a question, right? So Deepak has already answered in the chat. So please refer to the chat. Okay, so uh, we started long time back uh, sure. uh, uh, as far as uh, databases is concerned, but we have evolved a lot, uh, and that is purely due to the need. Okay, because we, as we all, uh, as we all say, and this is this is very well known as well, uh, that uh, like necessity is the mother of all invention. Uh, it it was needed, it is needed, and uh, so so we have evolved over time. So we started with like back in 19, 1960, and we had. Uh, so many databases coming in and to in today's time uh, that we see big data and no SQL into picture we have come a long way okay uh, and we'll go uh, like we have further needs as well as I said you the data size is increasing so we'll have to have some other advancement in databases right so uh, what we will uh, understand what we learn is uh, something which got which is from uh, 90s and early 2000s so MySQL uh, got very matured in uh, early 90s. Okay, so we'll, we are learning that and that is being used across, uh, in, even in big data, we use MySQL kind of type of language. Now SQL in a uh, big data world, so uh, no SQL, not only SQL. Okay, so when I talk about uh, people generally say no means uh, no SQL, is no structured query language. That is not the uh, case. We have structured query language extensively in that, Okay, but apart from structured query language, we have other concepts, okay, like documents, okay, and scripting uh, in that. 
that in that will enable us to deal with the unstructured data it's not no sql it's not only sql okay but it is sql okay it will have sql but apart from sql it will have other components as well okay so uh, mechanism of storage of uh, storage and retrieval of unstructured data model by means other than tableau relation in a relational databases so uh, we always use tableau relation that data that are stored in table format rows and column uh, and sql rdbms to query but in uh, no sql apart from tableau data relations we have other other relations as well relation relations okay so uh, i guess we, uh, we are good uh, at uh, till this point so the next we uh, we have is uh, like data models uh, on the third part that is uh, defining relational databases and comparing comparing it with trans transactional databases okay so uh, any idea uh, like people who have worked uh, how do we how how will you distinguish between rdbms and a and a transactional databases transactional models are the same are they different they are they are same but a uh, different aspect what do you feel about, about it any idea no uh, i think in the today's world most of the transactional database are rdbms based technology example so if i talk about uh, uh, so what uh, so generally people understand transactions means bank okay so uh, that is not the case so uh, transactions uh, if you talk about if i am purchasing something from flipkart that is also a transaction so uh, is it rdbms uh yes okay any other thoughts guys from the, from the audience fahad you guys are uh, like and deeper when you were buying something from uh, supermarkets or uh, online i think that is a transactional data like uh, on what date we purchase which things and uh, uh, i think uh, that is the transactional data okay and that can be handled in rdbms yeah i think uh, yes we can handle in rd because it is not a big data so we can <laughs> okay so now uh, the, the reason we are comparing it so what is the reason because uh, uh, this this forms very uh, this becomes very important uh, at least when uh, from understanding a big data perspective okay understanding what is the need of the uh, like moment so uh, like earlier i used to hear a lot that transaction means like people you drawing money from atm uh, going and withdrawing money by check so that is a transaction so uh, later on that got uh, that got uh, over headed by this uh, uh, supermarket retail manufacturing okay and then now in today's time we see a lot of transactions happening online like uh, e-commerce flipkart amazon any any example that you take uh, yeah, last week i yes, uh, read an article where i saw mindra handling uh, around 15000 uh, orders of, uh, per minute i think they are uh, need of uh, big data i think so no so oh, yeah so that's that's what my point is so that that is where i'm coming in okay so to be very uh, to be very frank okay and uh, in today's capability uh, though we are improving a lot the what we see uh, in relational databases today okay 10 years back that was not even imagined okay it was not even imagined that we can do that stuff in rdbms okay uh the thing is uh, relational databases have some bottlenecks okay and uh, that bottleneck is uh, when it comes to stored data okay because at, at the back relational databases has this concept of pagination okay indexing and indexing it in its own capability uh, so the 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 speed with which we write the data and the speed with which we read the data is a bottleneck in relational databases okay uh, and that is still there okay. uh, though we are working to optimize it but when we talk about uh, speed the volume uh, the volume so big data is defined by four five v's right so uh, volume and velocity okay that that is where we lack in rdbms volume and, velocity i think uh, yeah 
so uh, the transaction is uh, what i mean is uh, like if i do 10000 transaction in an hour that is workable okay but since uh, the organization is now moving uh, over nationwide and worldwide so 10000 per hour is very small it is a uh, 10 lakh 100000 uh, 200000 transaction per minute an hour okay in that in, in that cases rdbms uh, falls okay so we need transitional models okay either you uh, build the model uh, in in the relational databases in a way that uh, it can you model it different way or you use big data system that is the only solution okay so the learning objective is like define the uh, describe define and describe the relational and transitional databases okay so uh, examples that we'll take is uh, your retail example so uh, like someone going and buying something from uh, pantaloons or a walmart okay uh, that is a transaction that we are doing okay. and then uh, uh, can you see Guys, uh, can you mute yourself? Uh, who is not because there's yeah. Okay, uh, and then uh, we'll see uh, how to build a relation. If we if we one minute. Yeah. So uh, to build a, a transitional model, like how do we build a relation uh, that is important, uh, like uh, how our, uh, employee tables should be related to department and department should be related to HR. The how, how do we build this relation is important. So uh, we'll check that. Okay. Uh, then we come to the concept of primary keys in a database. So, uh, and this, uh, this, uh, and then we'll explain the ER diagram. So in that thing in RDBMS revolves around ER diagram. So what is ER diagram? ER diagram is your entity relationship. Yeah. So how do we uh, build a relation between different tables? One to one, one to many kind of relationship. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So uh, we'll, we'll learn that, uh, describe the primary key, uh, primary keys in the database. So if you recall, uh, we talked about uh, like indexing the Excel sheet in Excel sheet, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So the core agenda of this uh, uh, labeling was so that nine uniquely identifies Gaurav Samantha. Okay. And then uh, eight uniquely uh, uh, like identifies Aritra. Okay. So this is nothing but your primary key. This becomes a primary key because this particular column is he helping you to uniquely identify each row of the table. So this becomes your primary key. Okay. And uh, here onwards, we'll uh, denote this as a PK primary key. Okay. Then uh, going ahead, we'll see ER diagrams. How do we uh, relate each table with other uh, uh, with other table? How what is the relation? Okay. Now. Uh, here is a one liner difference if it if, you, if it makes uh, like change in some perspective please read it okay a relational model allows for easy querying and data manipulation in an easy logical and intuitive way okay everything is in the table okay and uh, uh, you are able to query it you are able to build a relation that forms a relational model okay transitional model is operational databases in so, like I've given uh, since we'll be using medical data in so, uh, sorry we'll be using insurance data so insurance claims within a health health healthcare department so here we talk about uh, the volume if you have lot of uh, things to write and read like we cannot uh, depend on relation we'll have to use transitional models okay fine so let's go ahead and uh, what kind of relation that we have uh, uh, so think uh, let's uh, like think of uh, ourselves keeping ourselves into a center and uh, me with my company or uh, me with my parents okay and people who are in school they can think a student uh, in comparison to the college so what kind of relation you say you uh, share so, uh, th there are different kinds of relation one to many many to many and one to one 
so me and you like let's say i have uh, 18 participants now uh, me and you we share a one to one relation what is that like uh, we are in a session and uh, like we, we are, are here communicating like one to one so we are communicating one to one uh, if there is if there is only one candidate in the session okay so i am communicating with him and he is communicating with me okay so there is a one to one relation i am listening to him he is listening to me only one to one relation okay and when it, uh, what be uh, like just um, imagine a uh, current scenario when i have 17 students in the session so i am communicating and it is being heard by 17 different students so the relation becomes one to many okay now let's say i bring in four five faculties more four five mentors and we become five okay and we have 17 candidates so like five of our five of us is speaking and 17 of you guys are hearing and at the same time if 17 of you speak five of us will hear so that becomes many to many relation okay this is like keeping the current scenario as a example now let's try and relate this with the database world okay uh, a tabular world uh, an employee in a company okay or let's say uh, or a student in a college a student has one two and there are so many departments you have computer labs you have science lab you have uh, stack economics statistics department okay subjects so there are faculties so like faculty like you report to different faculties you go and meet every faculty so that becomes one to many relation okay you as a student you meet so many faculties so that like they, because they are taking classes so it becomes one to many relation now talk about many to many relation okay so teacher to te there are teachers okay uh, and teachers to teacher relation will be many to many because there are many teachers they are communicating with each other okay then it becomes one to one like like what what is one to one so let's say you have one friend in college okay so you and your friend share one to one relation okay guys is it clear uh, the relationship description so once once we portray the same thing uh, in your uh, table format so you you'll understand how do we how do we use how do we use this actually okay now uh, uh, with relationship so in er diagram we have entity relationship uh, the term is er entity and relationship so we understood the relationship so can anybody tell me what will be the relationship between principal and the teacher oh one to many one to many correct and uh, teacher to teacher to uh, principal many to one many to one okay okay and any uh, real life example of uh, many to many any uh, let's forget about many to many any real life example of many to uh, one to many one to many like when you doing some kind of broad, broadcasting uh, for a particular stream like one from one show broadcasting yeah radio show good yeah. okay so uh, great and if you talk about if you talk about social media okay let's talk about let's talk about twitter okay so uh, you have a profile what what kind of relationship does it what kind of relationship relationship exists there one to many you you being an individual uh, it it has one to many relationship uh, okay good so uh, fine so i hope uh, uh, yeah so there is one uh, example a uh, very real life example uh, coming in from dipanshi okay so she says like uh, customer placing in um, uh, customer placing multiple orders so uh, think in uh, from the database database perspective table tabular perspective what kind of relationship does it uh, does it have hello yeah so uh, what kind of relationship does it uh, uh, have oh, if a customer places multiple orders
think uh, yeah so uh, think from a, a database database perspective should it be one to many or one to one there, there will be a confusion i'm 100 sure not tell me uh, with a justification <coughs> Uh, for the organization, okay, like suppose it is one organization to whom uh, the customer has placed the order, it's one to one. But because there are multiple products, suppose, uh -huh. then it's one to many. Perfect, perfect. So th this was the uh, this was what I was expecting in terms of confusion. So uh, the answer, uh, the question was one to many, and uh, the answer was given by the machine. So the, she was uh, that that has a different uh, that became becomes. Uh, like uh, you, you get a multiple uh, answers from a perspective way. Okay, if I say a customer placing multiple orders, okay, if the cust if the order is if the order is placed with the same company, it becomes one to one. Okay, because all the orders will each order is a transaction, and each transaction is stored in a single table. We have a order stand or, or orders table. Okay, where each transaction is stored. So there is a customer table and there is an order table. Okay, since it is the same company, okay, so uh, each order will be stored in a single table. So there is only two tables coming into picture. Okay, one is your customer table, and one is your and one is your uh, uh, transition table. So one to one. Okay, but if I talk about uh, multiple uh, product from different companies or uh, like let's say uh, different brands, let's say each uh, each transition is stored in one brand. Uh, one brand is stored in each table so then in that case it becomes one to many guys are you with me in this or uh, is there any do you have any i'm fine i'm fine with it any difference in thoughts or uh, uh, please come ahead if you have dipanshi is it, is it is it fine for you Okay, perfect. So let's move ahead. Now let's talk about entity. Entity is anything questionable. Okay, so uh, uh, when we talk about entity relationship, so entity forms like uh, uh, a subject area, okay, uh, for which you have the data. Okay, so and uh, how, how that data are related to other data that becomes a relationship. Okay. Fine. Uh, data uh, data model building blocks. So one to many uh, customer customers to invoices. Uh, one this is one to one to many, and uh, many to many student to classes. Uh, this is one example that we have seen. Uh, uh, just have a look. Uh, once we start coding, once we write co uh, queries, so we'll see a lot of it. But uh, this is how the ER diagram looks like in real life when the data engineers get the uh, the the details like what they need to build they actually get this okay they uh, get different uh, sets of data and what is the relation between that data they get and then they start working and creating a model okay and uh, uh, what do you think is it a star star schema or a snowflake schema Guys, any uh, any uh, guess? Not star. This is not star, so uh, it's a snowflake schema. And uh, the reason is uh, just keep there's one sleek distinction, and that will help you to identify everywhere and anywhere. If there is, uh, I mean, uh, one center node, okay, and all the other nodes are connected to that center node, it's form, it forms a star. But here we see there is no, there is nothing called centers, uh, one center. So uh, this has two links, this has two links, this has three links, okay. So this is a snowflake schema. Okay, so uh, I guess we are good here. Let's move ahead. So this little, uh, little more uh, like practical. Based, if you see, uh, 
like you have products you have pairs you have uh, you have facts you have period you have pres prescribers you have patients okay so this is how it looks like and uh, like uh, you uh, you see a arrow here so the arrow has a indication it indicates so the, what it, what it indicates is basically this fact is related to pair okay by pair pk pair is the id how they, how they are related they are related by uh, this d underscore pair okay pair underscore d underscore id okay now uh, when i talk about this so this fact f underscore fact is related to d underscore product and what is what is common in those these two so if you see you have product dim id here also you have product dim id so product dim id forms a common column between these two and these two tables are related via uh, by this uh, product underscore dim underscore id similarly to all you to join a table you you need minimum of one common column so the common column can extend to two or three okay but you need to have one common column okay and that is called primary key so if you have a common column between two tables uh, via which you can join okay you can join the table you can join these two table d pair and d fact that is called a primary key now primary key can be one two or three multiple times okay uh, that is fine and this relationship how these these people are how these two tables are related to each other is called relationship okay now how, uh, here it is not clearly uh, like you cannot say clearly since un until unless you see the data but uh, this relationship the, the relationship that we are talking about now one to many many to many one to one is this relationship the arrow which you see here this arrow okay so this is uh, this forms a relationship uh, does this table and this table says one to one relation one to many relation or many to many relation okay this is defined here okay <clears throat> any question guys here <coughs> hello and, uh, yeah and guys uh, one more thing just a uh, quick note sorry uh, uh, in the email that i have sent yesterday uh, there was a whatsapp uh, link a whatsapp group that we have formed just join that uh, link whatsapp groups to keep the discussion on uh, because we'll have a session on saturday and sundays uh, but uh, keep the group on if you have any questions if any queries technical difficulties so you can put your questions there as well okay. yeah go ahead sorry yeah uh, frankly speaking i am not aware about the mail which you have sent might okay. you might have sent yesterday so yeah. can i share that over, over the chat yeah just uh, drop me all your email ids guys who have not received an email mm -hmm. like everyone who did not receive an email yesterday uh, i'll put it in the chat i'll take it from the chat and i'll send it across today yeah apart from this mysql download which we are doing how how you're gonna take uh, our pc on uh, like uh, sharing we'll, we'll do it from here uh, this uh, zoom has that flexibility we'll do it zoom yeah. so i need to check okay whether in my pc zoom is there or not so yeah, yeah just check make sure that you have zoom in the zoom yeah so yeah quickly let's uh, 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 like that couple or two three more slides uh, uh let's do this and then we'll start with the installation yeah, because we are running out of, uh, out of time today so uh we have a detailed discussion but yeah, let's let's make sure that we are clear on this uh now okay i'll zoom it a little bit for better visibility uh guys everybody have a look into this diagram and let's try and understand i don't know who have drawn this but yeah so we have uh, six tables so uh, the boxes that you are seeing re uh, resembles a table okay so let's get into the technical jargons uh, whatever jargons we have and clear it out from here this is a table each uh, each box represents a table okay and this is a table name d underscore product is a table name d underscore pair is a table name d period d prescriber and d patient these are uh, and then d f fact these are six different tables okay now each table has its own attributes so this is your attributes product dim id market name 
generic name uh product name here sorry this is a, this is a market name and then product name these are all attributes we term it as a attribute in the field of in the world of database okay so each table has its own attribute okay now there are some common attributes and only if you have a common attribute you will be able to build the relationship we are clear on this so far okay so if you have a product dim id so we will be able to relate this table with other table only when it has a it has any any of the common column okay and in general we build any relationship on the key on the primary key foreign key composite key there are a number of keys but let's restrict our discussion towards primary key so we can build relationship between two table only when we have a primary key i'm talking about like best cases uh, people might come up and tell that i have a market name in common i can build a relationship you are free to do that okay uh, and in worst cases it happens so i have built a relationship between pairs a market name okay string value but we in general we practice uh, we generally go for a best practice and uh, we use uh, ids primary keys foreign keys okay that is integers fine so what was the discussion we only build a relationship between two tables when we have a common column okay to be precise we only build a relationship between two tables or multiple tables when we have a keys okay so now if you see here uh, this table f fact uh, why this is related to all the other five tables because this is a data source okay this is a data source and from here other tables are getting generated okay and that's the reason it is called fact okay perfect so uh, uh so far uh, any question guys people at least from uh, non technical background then i can go ahead here from here uh hello yeah yeah i just want to ask one thing in the changing world like where we talk about big data database which might not be purely a relational database like uh, with table and rows uh, -huh. uh what is the future is it like uh, rdbms with mysql going to stay for some time or this question uh, is generally like i was in a uh, uh, convention okay convention and this uh, everywhere this this question is being asked okay uh, what is the existence uh, what is the future of uh, sql okay mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, like uh, like for 100 percent i can say okay there is no certainty like technically and statistically 100% saying something is always wrong but 99% i can say that sql and rdbms will be there and the reason is uh there, there's one reason because uh the dependencies and and uh the systems the infrastructure that we have okay uh, we cannot in a day or a month or a decade or a two decade we cannot ramp it up it is not possible you you just check the dependencies of uh, rdbms in today's time it is it is enormous it is it still uh, rdbms still comprises 80 85% of the industry okay it is just uh, in this 10 years 8 years uh, uh, big data no sql was just able to take 10% of the market share okay but still 85 90% of the market share is still uh, being uh, occupied and being uh, uh, like ruled by rdbms and you cannot expect to uh, like get it zero or completely ramp down in 10 years or 20 years or 30 years this is never going to happen okay so what is going to happen is rdbms technically uh, will revamp itself okay become more fast uh, work with the, work work with all its challenges like speed volume velocity okay and it will remodel, remodel itself but telling that this will completely go off is a vague statement is completely vague statement okay uh that's really good can we say maybe in some time to come this indexing and aggregate yeah uh, that might go away no why so how will you so again uh, i uh, aggregation is what industry works in the entire analytics and data science industry works on aggregates okay so who uses tables 
Uh, see, why I ask this question is like SAP has come with HANA, Oracle is also coming up, okay, with memory database where the aggregation, okay, and uh, indexing might work on the fly. Mm -hmm. So, so that's why I was just trying to understand. We are understanding, grasping the concept where a lot of stress is built up on sorting, aggregation, okay, indexing. Uh, so are these concepts going to relevant maybe five year or 10 year down the line or See, how, how do we how do we measure uh, the best thing to uh, foresee future is to understand what is happening current okay that is how we foresee future where where is the industry moving in and what is going to happen next in at least in in a decade or so right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so indexing is one key area like i have a couple of my friends who are uh, who are pursuing their phds in uh, data mining and uh, optimization of databases. There are a couple of folks, okay? Uh, someone is in, is in US, someone is in uh, India as well. So their research is in, in this uh, indexing and uh, optimization and uh, compression techniques, okay? So since they are researching, they are uh, working on the same, they are working on the existing technology, ex ex existing techniques to re revamp it, to remodel it, okay? So uh, you talk about uh, uh, this memory databases and you talked about this uh, like uh, on a go indexing. How, how is those like getting drived? So they are existing, the exist, uh, they are using the existing uh, concepts. Okay. They are just moving the like type of, they are working on the speed. So they are not using the hardcore uh, hard disk or the, uh, to store the data. They are using SSDs, solid state devices. So that solid state devices has a very, uh, like the speed of processing is very high so ultimately the indexing will happen uh, very fast and these people are terming it as this indexing will happen on the flight so nothing is happening on the flight so they are just using a good memory to, for better speed so that people don't feed it okay but indexing like i mean like uh, if you think uh, technically the way it is built entire databases is is working on index right so it, it is going to be there but yeah work, uh, the uh, the techniques tools uh, infrastructure might change but uh, it will it will not see a completely different uh, version of it but we'll see a improved version of it that is what i wanted to say that's it yeah hi, thanks for it really yeah. good okay thanks uh, guys any 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 other questions okay so uh, let's uh, uh, move ahead so we have a i wanted to discuss a couple of things here in terms of facts and dimensions okay uh, uh due to shortage of time uh do one thing so uh, let's uh under, try and understand this and then in the next session we'll take it from here itself because there are a lot many things to be discussed and uh, we have uh, facts here f facts f facts generally forms the uh, data source for other tables and what you see here d pair d product uh d period uh, d prescriber and d patient so the d stands for dimension okay the f here stands for fact okay d here stands for dimension now what does it mean it means fact is a transitional data or uh, like all the transactions that happens comes and resides here let's say uh like as the pansi was saying uh, like a person has placed five orders okay so the order details the uh, like uh, uh like product name brand name amount uh, transition time and uh, all those things address where it will be delivered will come and sit here okay all the transition detail all the five transition will come and sit here but who purchased it let's say uh, d pair uh, the person who paid purchased it that uh, person's information what is the person's name how old he is what is the date of birth uh, how good or bad customer whatever details it has address country Deep, that is peer's detail will remain here okay and then uh, product uh, let's say he bought a uh, mango uh, like, like he bought uh, marks and spencer's bag okay so marks and spencer's uh, details uh, product detail will stay here okay and all those things so what what do you understand from fact and dimension is the dimension the customer related information will remain as it is for a long time just try and understand that this this is very important. Uh, the customer will remain there. there uh, at most, what happened? 
customers in six months or a year, he might change his address. He might change. So uh, his, uh, uh, like he might change his address after a year, or he might change his uh, phone number after two years. That is very less. That happens uh, very uh, not very occasionally. And then uh, product. So mango, uh, mango or Marks and Spencer is selling his, his bag, uh, their bag uh, might change its cost or something. That will come in this idea. But transaction as a thing keeps on happening. Okay, and uh, all the transaction are stored here. So this forms a transactional database. So all the transaction is stored in one place. Okay, that is called fact. Okay, and all the aggregated value, you aggregate the transaction and you store it in the uh, dimensions. So this is the concept of fact and dimension. Okay, I, I pre-assumed that there is a confusion. Okay. Yeah, definitely I'll share the recording. I'll share the recording. So I pre-assumed there will be a confusion because the confusion should be there. Okay, if you don't ask questions, I will not be able to explain you. So my thing is, all the transactions will store in the fact. Okay, then you have dimensions. So you need to understand what is dimension. Dimension is in a layman language, uh, if I want to tell you anything that is very static, that does not changes, that does not change a lot. Okay, that is a dimension. Fact is transaction. Whatever transaction you do, and transaction happens very on every second, every minute, right? Is stored here. Now each dimension is linked with fact via primary key. Okay. If I want to see as a customer Sajid how many purchases he made in the year 2019. Okay. So what I'll do is I have my information here a D customer, D pair, the Sajid, uh, my name, my customer ID is here. I'll pull that customer ID from here. I'll go and hit this table. I'll search with those customer ID. Okay, since uh, uh, that is my primary key here as well. I will uh, look how many, uh, how much amount I have paid over time. I'll sum that all and I'll be able to answer the question. How much did I spend in 2019? Simple as that. Okay. I'll I'll pause here. I'll stop here because uh, uh, like we need to take the installation. I'll uh, stop the recording.